This video is part of our Qt C++ GUI development intermediate course. It is this chapter here on deployment and we will be deploying the application we build in the course on Windows, Mac and Linux. The link to the course is shared in the description below. You can also check out the other courses we have on Qt. You can learn about Qt Quick and Qt Widgets. In this lecture, we're going to start and see if we can deploy Painter app on Linux. This is my Linux box. If I go to my uh, terminal here and say you name, and uh, you're going to see the information here. It is Ubuntu 16.04. And uh, we're going to use this to play with uh, deployment of Qt applications on Linux. So this is Painter app. You see the source code here. And we're going to try and build it first and see if everything is working as expected. So we're going to hit the green button here and you're going to see that it's going to run. And uh, this is pretty cool. You see that it looks exactly the way you think it was looking on Windows. And if you also run it on a Mac, I bet it's going to look like this. And this is pretty cool. This is the power of Qt. You can write your code once and build it on multiple platforms and you are mostly going to get the same thing. So now what we want is to deploy this thing. The first thing we want to do with this guy is to build in release mode and see if we can get hold of our binary. So we're going to go down here and we're going to hit this button. We're going to choose release and we're going to build in release mode. We're going to hit the build button and look at the compiler output and see what we get. We're going to see our application in the process of being built. We're going to wait until it's done. It shouldn't take longer. Okay, the build is done and it took 42 seconds, which is a bit longer than expected, but we are fine. We have our binary now and we can run this to see if it works as expected as well and it's going to work pretty well. For example, we can use this to load one of the files that I worked on before. It is stored on my desktop, if I remember correctly, and you see the file here, I can load it, open, and it's going to open, and it's going to show up here, I can center, and this is pretty cool. So this is the application we want to ship to our user. Another thing we haven't taken care of here that I really don't like is the title here. So we are going to change it. I don't want it to say main window. This is an application we want to ship to our users. So we better make it better. What we're going to do, we're going to go to main window UI and uh, we're going to hit the UI form to open it. And a quick dirty fix to that is to change the window title for our main window. And we're going to change that from main window to painter if you look here, you see that you can also specify a window icon and uh, we can click here and uh, choose resource. I think we have a resource we can use and I want to use this guy here. If you want, you can also do this on Windows. It is going to work the same. So we're going to hit OK and we're going to try and run the application again. We're going to save all and always save files before build. We're going to save all. We're going to wait for the application to be rebuilt and it should show up here in no time. Okay, we have the application here. And if you come here, you see that we have a cool icon and this is looking pretty good. I like this. Another thing we want to try on Linux is that our languages are working. Okay, we're going to go in edit and we're going to choose language settings and we want this guy to run in Chinese, for example. We're going to hit OK, we're going to close it, and we're going to run it again. We're going to hit the green button, and uh, check this out. It's running in Chinese, and uh, this is much better. You can use it in Chinese. You can also put it in uh, French, so let's check this. You want to do as much tests as possible because some things behave weird in some platforms and uh, you never know until you really test these things. Okay, the application is running in French and it looks like we are fine. Let's try to load something. We're going to go to home. No, we're going to go to desktop. We're going to find my file. We're going to open it and it's going to show up exactly the way it should. 
and I think I am happy with whatever I have here. So we're going to close this. And uh, another thing you should see is that my system language here is in English. So my application, so Painter app is correctly picking up this. Remember my Windows machine was in Chinese and it was being picked up as well. So this is pretty cool. So now we have a binary we are happy with. We're going to go in uh, projects and see where this thing is being built. You can see the entire directory here. We can copy it or I don't think we even need to copy this. We can go in my home directory and we're going to find it. A release world of Painter app. So I am going to bring up my uh, file browser and I am going to go in my uh, home directory which is here. I have a debug world which I don't want. I want to get hold of this release world and I'm going to go inside and if I scroll down I am going to find Painter app here. How cool is that? One thing I want you to notice on Linux is that you can double click on this guy to try and get it to tell you what it needs to run, but uh, it seems this doesn't work on Linux. So we have to rely on our deployment tools to put our dependencies together. And this is what we're going to do now. So we're going to close the application and we're going to copy Painter app and we're going to go back to home and I am going to put that in my downloads folder. You're going to see the reason why in a minute. I am going to create a new folder here and I am going to name it Painter app. Painter app and uh, typing is really messy on uh, my Linux box here. I don't know why, but uh, we're going to use this and I am going to go inside here and put in my binary. Now we need to bring all the dependencies together for this guy. And uh, we are going to use a tool we call Linux Deploy Qt. Let's open my browser and show you that. We're going to bring up this var and uh, we're going to go to the browser and you're going to find this GitHub link which says Linux Deploy Qt. And uh, you see that this tool makes applications self-contained by copying the libraries and plugins that the application uses and optionally generates an app image. How cool is that? If you don't know what an app image is, it is one file that you can click on to open your application. And uh, this is going to be pretty cool on Linux. You're going to save this. If you have used Linux for a while, you know that it is not easy for common people to run applications on Linux because of the dependency hell. There are many dependency problems and many people can't deal with those. So what this technology is doing, it is taking everything your application needs to run and it is going to put everything together for your application to run without any need for more dependencies. And this is pretty cool for many normal users of your application. I like this technology and I actually have been using this for a year, I think. And uh, our users actually like this because it makes things really easy. So we're going to use this and I am going to show you how this works. If you want, you can read more on this. They tell you all about this guy. They say that it is even based on the Mac Deploy Qt tool, which is official from the Qt company. But uh, this is not official. It is just somebody who was nice enough to put this together and make it available for the rest of us to take advantage of. And uh, it is pretty cool. So if you want to learn about app image, you can click on this link. I think it's going to take you there. It is the technology that is going to allow us to put together one file that we can send to our users. So this Linux Deploy Qt is kind of two things in one. One thing it's going to do is to put together your dependencies. So it's going to also create an app image for you so that you can send it to your users. One single file that is going to wrap everything your application needs together and it's going to be super easy for your users to run your applications. And another thing I should say here is that it is not really necessary to use the Qt installer framework on Linux because we have something even better. We have one app image that we can send to our users and they can run it directly without even needing to install something on the computer. 
but uh, I am going to show you how the Qt installer framework can work on Linux as well in cases you happen to need that. So we're going to try this uh, Linux deploy Qt thing. What I want you to do is to go to the releases page where they have this guy. I think they have the link to that somewhere. Let's go down and see if we can find it. And uh, now that I am looking for it, I'm not going to find it. But um, hmm, let's go up. And I think we have a link to the release page of this tool here. And if you go down, you're going to find release build. You want to download this guy and put it somewhere on your computer. So hit the download button and it should show up in your download folder or wherever you set your browser to download stuff. Mine is going to be stored in my download folder. So let's go there. I'm going to bring up my file browser. I'm going to go in downloads here and I look at what I have here. Linux deploy Qt x86 64 dot app image and you see that it even comes as an app image to make it easier for you to run this thing double check and make sure that you downloaded the same thing we need let's go back to our browser and make sure and you're going to see that it is the same thing here let's check its size to kind of make sure that it is the same thing we can go to downloads and uh, we can uh, open a terminal here and uh, we can ls a l h to show all the information we can about this guy and uh, we're going to see linux deploy qt is 15 megabytes the one on the website says 14 megabytes but it is almost the same thing so we're going to use this so what you want to do after you download this guy is make sure you can run it on linux and uh, what we do we're going to go to desktop and we're going to go to properties and we're going to go to permissions and make sure that the execute flag here is checked so we're going to close this now that we know that this thing is going to run we're going to open a terminal here and we're going to try and run this we're going to say linux deploy qt and we can hit tab for autocomplete to work hmm so we're going to say Linux deploy Qt, we're going to try and run this guy. And if you run it, it's going to give you the instructions on how you can work with this guy. It's going to tell you to use this guy, you need to give me an app binary or a desktop file, and you can pass in a bunch of other options here. What we're going to do, we're going to give it the path to our binary. And uh, we are also going to show you how you can create an app image for this guy. And it is pretty easy because all you need to do is pass in an app image flag here. Okay, so we're going to try this. But before we do, let's double check what we want to actually package. We have Painter app, we have our binary here, but uh, on Linux, there are other things that we need to give to this binary here before we call Linux deploy Qt on this. You need to give this guy a bunch of files. I am going to put those in. I have those already prepared for Painter app. One is the desktop file, which is really a desktop system thing. This is going to depend on the desktop system you're using to run this guy. But uh, you have to put in this file and it has some information about the icons of this Painter app application of ours. And uh, let's open it. I'm going to open gedit, one of the editors I have on this computer. We're going to say gedit. I think we have that text editor. We're going to bring this up. And uh, yeah, it is here. I can drag this guy and drop it on top here. And you're going to see that it's just information about our application, the type of the application, the name of the application, if you want to put in any comment, you can put that here. The executable is called Painter app and it is here. The icon is Painter app. You don't need to put in any extension and all the information you need. And if you want to know more about this, you can search about the desktop files on Ubuntu. You're going to have many results in Google and they are going to tell you all about this. For now, we're just going to use this. Make sure you have these files then. 
If you don't, please download them uh, from the course lecture and you're going to put them wherever you have your Patreon app binary here. Now that we have this, we're going to run Linux Deploy Qt. If you look here, you're going to see that my Patreon app folder here is in the same directory as the Linux Deploy Qt tool. And uh, this was to make it easier to directly jump to this directory here. I don't want to put in crazy full paths, which are just going to make things complicated. Now we're going to go to this terminal here. We're going to open this guy so that you see what is happening. We're going to go down and uh, we're going to say Linux deploy Qt. And uh, we're going to give it a path to our binary. Remember, it is stored in Painter app and uh, it's going to be called painter app this is the binary and uh, we can hit enter and you're going to see what happens it's going to say it doesn't have a path to qt and uh, this is bad so we need to give it the environment variable for a qt for whether qt is installed let's take whatever was generated here out we don't want this. Okay, let's come back here and set our environment variable. We're going to clear. And uh, before I do anything, I want to show you the location where I have my Qt installed. Let's click on this guy here and uh, I can't open it, can I? We're going to open our file browser and we're going to go to home and uh, we're going to find my Qt installation here. If you go in, you're going to find all you need about this kit here. This is the kit we are using for Linux. So I am going to set up an environment variable, which is going to make it easier to find where my Qt installation is. And uh, I have it already copied on my clipboard because I am really bad at typing this things. So I'm going to put in the command here, export path, and you put in the path like this. Hit enter and your path is going to be loaded. Now we can say Linux deploy Qt, let's say that. And uh, we're going to give it Painter app, the path to our binary. And we're going to hit enter. And watch what is happening here. It is loading everything the application here needs to run. And we're going to wait for it to put everything together. It is going to load our translations by default. It is going to put in all kinds of crazy things that Painter app needs to run. And uh, these are the files you will need to send to your users to be able to run this guy. Let's wait for this thing to finish. Okay, it's done. And you see that we have in our libs. If you go in here, these are like DLLs on um, Linux. You see we have Qt widgets, we have Qt GUI and all kinds of crazy things that the application needs to run. We have the plugins. If you go in, you're going to have in all kinds of crazy things as well. This is what the application here needs to run but we don't really need the translations here. So we can uh, safely remove them because if you remember, our application here is loading the translations that we have bundled in the binary here. So we are pretty fine without that translations folder. But uh, this is all Painter app is going to need to run. If you double click on it, it's going to open and this is going to be pretty cool. So if you want it, you can send this file to somebody it's going to run without any problem because we have everything we need for this application to run right here. Okay, one thing I told you that uh, Linux Deploy Qt does even better is generate an app image and uh, that's going to be one single file that you can send to somebody to be able to run this application. And uh, that's pretty easy. We're going to try and run Linux Deploy Qt by itself. Let's try and do that. We're going to delete everything here. We don't need any parameter. We're going to run this. And it's going to tell you that it is possible to give it a parameter to force it to generate an app image for us. So we're going to do this. We're going to run the command and we're going to say app image and we're going to run it again. And uh, check what happens. It is going to do its thing. And uh, when it's done, we're going to have an app image that we can run. And uh, it should show up here on the top level of the folder that contains your things where you run this command here. Let's wait and see. It is going to take its time to do this. 
but it's going to be pretty exciting when it's done. Okay, looks like it's making some progress now. It's going to generate my uh, app image and it looks like it's done and uh, you can read all you can about this process. It's going to show you all the information about the app image that was generated for you. But uh, the big problem is where do you find this guy? Hmm. We're going to go up again. We're going to click on this guy and we're going to go up. But if you look at this folder where Painter app is, you're going to find my app image here. It's going to say Painter app x86 app image. And uh, this is the one single file that you can send to anybody who would want to run Painter app. And you see I clicked multiple times and I have multiple windows. But uh, this is pretty cool. You can uh, do whatever you want with this. And it's going to work pretty well. I don't know why I have two icons here. Maybe it is because I opened this twice. Oh, this is what we had before. But now we want to use the version from our Painter app, app image and it's going to run and it's going to show up right here. And this is pretty cool. Now you can take this file, send it to anybody who is running Linux and uh, there is a high probability, maybe 80 or 90, that this thing is going to run and this is pretty cool. I actually tested this on many machines. For example, it was working on other Debian distributions that I am using or my users are using and it's working pretty well for me. So you can try this and see if it works better for you. Another thing I should point out again is that you really don't need to go through the Qt installer framework with this technology because you, you even have something better. You have one single file that you can give to your users and that they will be able to run your application. But for completeness, I'm going to try and show you how you can use the Qt installer framework on Linux if you want that. And I would like to do that in the next lecture. For now, I hope you enjoyed the process we went through to generate a binary for Painter app that was usable on Linux. It was pretty cool. And I am clicking multiple times here. I am really excited that we are able to write our source code once and be able to build on multiple platforms. And uh, this is going to reduce significantly the amount of effort you have to do to get your applications to run on multiple platforms. And uh, again, we can try playing with um, using multiple languages because I really like this. I'm going to put this in Chinese. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to close this and I'm going to run it again, double click, and it's going to show up in Chinese. So we are going to stop here in this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it again. And we're going to see how you can use the Qt installer framework in the next lecture. Go ahead and finish up here and meet me there.